This is The Riot, and we're a podcast that's based on a radio show that's based on real-life exploits. <laughs> of a radio show. When you say based on a radio show, it just makes you feel real. But I That's mean, what I want to do. Our it's radio show on. is real. You're just getting part of that, and that's this podcast. Which is based on the real-life exploits <laughs> of two mild-mannered reporters oh, yes. living in the world. And, and what they do, their daily escapades. Trying to get by. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to get by. So, hey, uh, podcast today. What do you got for us? Let's see. Nikki's birthday. is today. <gasps> Did I mention it's Nikki's birthday? Thank you for all the happy birthdays from everybody. It's Did been you guys so see sweet. The balloons? <laughs> You can see those. The other thing we did was a riot food fight. We yes. tried the Peeps Oreos, which is available. You'll hear it in this podcast. But then if you want to watch us with our riot food fight, that is posted at Radio U Riot. And that's on Facebook and YouTube as well. Subscribe and make sure you sign up to get notified for any time we post something. Or if we go live on Facebook, it'll notify you too. And hey, sneak peek. Talk about going live. I can't believe this. But next Thursday night, I thought we had like an extra week, week in between. We but don't. It's a week from this Thursday. So next Thursday night, uh, we will be doing the uh, Riot Live YouTube well, celebration Riot spectacular. Facebook Live. You face anniversary show. Snap Live. We'll be doing that. It's going to be huge. <laughs> so go ahead and subscribe. That way, like we said, you're all set and ready to go. All right. Well, you guys have a fantastic whatever this is. Enjoy the podcast. Bye. The Worst of the Riot box set is now available nowhere because we know you wouldn't want it anyway. It's the Worst of the Riot on Radio U. Hey, guys. Everybody. It's Nikki's birthday. Yay. Finally here. I should have had birthday music ready, but That's I didn't. Okay. I... I should, we were talking off air and, <laughs> and I, then it was just now it's here. We've got I all morning. Get ready. You're right. We do have all morning to celebrate Thank your you birthday. Thank you for my, my annual birthday drink. You're welcome. Can I tell you that the Starbucks that is near the studio, they have essentially made that the hardest Starbucks to get into ever. Oh, because of the, the road work like that you, they did? Yeah. Instead of... Like there are all these businesses along that way. Nobody goes into any of those businesses. I'm survived. <laughs> I'm surprised they even exist. But they set it up so that you can only like I those you it, can get into. But the Starbucks right. that everybody goes to, no, no dice. So like I made an illegal U-turn in which they had a big sign, no U-turn, and I'm like, oh, well, it's it's a birthday today. It's coming. Like watch the watch this U-turn right now, which I did, of course, and it not was not on record. You no, did not. I, <laughs> Nobody saw it. Nobody knows. And if I was put in a court of law, I'd be like, sir, what is a U-turn anyway? <laughs> Mine was like a V-turn. It was very sharp. Yeah, so I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, it was just one of those things. And then when you get out of the Starbucks, if you want to go this other, it was like, nope, you got to turn this way. You got to go in here. You got to turn around. You got to come back out to the light. You got to turn again. I'm like, are you guys... Did Starbucks not pay up? Like the city know. had a thing and Starbucks was like, we're not going to pay. And they're I like, I feel like Fine. that because originally I thought they redid all this road stuff going in and out of what's next to it, like this little strip center. And so I thought, oh, well, that must mean a better entrance for the Starbucks. And Which is what causes all the traffic anyway. Anyway, and then it was like, oh, we're not doing that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I don't Our know answer why we're is not. to make it a lot easier to get into the half price books that nobody no, the cares Panera's about. Been Busy there. That's yeah, also whatever. There. But it's still just like, look, Starbucks. You should have paid up at City Hall or something. Like whatever the heck it is. Because Three drinks for a year. <laughs> I, whatever it was going to take. Because they totally screwed you over. And by you, I mean me. I agree. But the good news is, at five a.m., nobody's down there. We have the drinks and we're fine. <laughs> no, no big deal. We're it's good. fine. And I had their um, bacon something turkey bacon it's reduced fat so i mean i'm thinner did you have the sandwich or the yeah. little um i had a sandwich instead of a, a, a drink cup of coffee because i had my own gotcha so, yeah. well all right i think they just microwave it because when i got it the entire thing was so hot that the it took same, about it was about an hour same, before yes. i could eat it <laughs> that means they're microwaving yeah it. so I, I feel good Your about coffee that as well <laughs> Not, I know that's not true. I know for sure. <laughs> like, I'll oh, put it in with the breakfast sandwich. It's, it's fine. You won't even notice. You remember that time you started your morning with a gas station breakfast sandwich and immediately regretted it? Yeah, it's like that. The Riot. Radio U. You know, Star Trek Discovery, Nikki, it's really... 
Really, really something? something. Now, let's walk back and make sure. Is that the CBS All Access show, the Star Trek one? Yeah, it's, well, like, one of your favorites, right? No. Aren't you a big fan of <laughs> CBS All Access? And that's the one where you had so many episodes last year, and then it came back with, like, a second half of the season? So, Nikki, come on. Like, focus, all right? You're, well, let's stay back on CBS All Access. Think about this. All the episodes of CSI, NCIS, and all the acronym shows all in one place. Ba-boom! Bam! <laughs> Who doesn't want it? That's why you're paying the monthly amount for the CBS All Access. Star Trek is just icing on cake. Yeah. That's all that is. When I bought that uh, open box TV, I forgot it came with a, a couple of months of CBS yeah, that's All Access. Right. We you never redeemed up? it. What? No, it's still there. I'll tell you who needs redeemed. <laughs> Come on, Nikki. <laughs> Couple of months of CBS All Access. And that'll change me. Yeah, Star Trek Discovery started back in September. Sure. And then uh, it's been running. They did have a little mid season break. It was set up in such a way to try to make you stay a CBS All Access member longer. And then it wrapped up last week. But the reason it is in the news is that it is currently the number one talked about show on the internet, according to Parrot Analytics. They take a look at what they call demand expressions. Now, they're not saying positive talks. They're just saying people were talking about it. The most talked about. But keep in mind, Nikki, that even hateful words on the Internet <laughs> count as words being yeah, spoken on the Internet. Yeah, but it doesn't count as someone subscribing to CBS All Access. That is true. You're not telling no lies. Uh, but it also, it, it's one of those things that they say gives people an idea of like, okay, this is like this is big. Like, people are talking about it. They They feel like maybe... You know, we went all right. What well, didn't you say that they kind of wrote each episode to uh, not shock you, but like at least last year, some of the episodes were trying to get people to talk about it. So they like, th- oh, yeah, throw it in. That sort of thing. Well, they definitely had episodes where they were like, and this is where they kiss. And this is where <laughs> they brush their teeth. And this is the one where they drop the F-bomb. And this is the one where they, and they had Tried those. Tried to make kind- it a bit yes. more dramatic than it really was. They, they made sure that for a long run, every episode had something where it's like, wait till the bloggers get a load of this. <laughs> so that leads to people talking about it, which, I mean, obviously worked in that case. But it did. I still want to know the subscriber sort of count information. I'm always fascinated by that, it, including with Netflix. Does a show get someone to subscribe? How long do they say a, a subscriber? Do they keep watching the show or do you get any data that shows they just pay each month, but they don't even watch? Like, I, that's just fascinating. I agree with you. It would be interesting to know. But uh, Star Trek Discovery did. I still haven't watched the finale, even though I saw the way it ends. And I... On the one hand, I'm like, oh, cool. And then on the other, I was like, oh, that's the show I really want. <laughs> Why did it take that long? The one about that spaceship's the one I'm really interested in. I've just been watching yours because it's a vacuum where nothing else lives. But if you could just switch over to that one. Did they get a second season? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting a second season, which they don't, they haven't said when or what or whatever, but it's out there, Nikki. And I'll tell you what else is out there. CBS All Access, and I'll tell you what else. It's somebody's birthday. So that present over there, I could take it back and just subscribe to you. My favorite part of the worst of the riot, when they shut up and the music starts. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Arguing on the internet. Now we've got the research, Nikki, that backs up how you should be doing it. It is a, oh, it's a testy thing. I'm I'm too afraid to argue online. It's better to me to just ignore it, but people don't. One simple step to arguing on the internet. What is it? Stop. Stop doing it? Yeah, check this out. UC Berkeley, University of Chicago, working together, they used 300 subjects. You're like, well, that's not enough. Hey, it's pretty good. Let's just start there. And here's what they did. They got these 300 people together, and they had them read things like political statements, like social statements, whatever, and then had them kind of like evaluate, talk back to, whatever. Um, And so they were... The people that read them were incredibly angry. Like, they talked about how stupid, empty-headed, like, they just said all this kind of stuff. Then they took the other group, and then they had them watch those very same statements being given by the person that gave them. And what they found is that when they actually saw the person talking, they evaluated them very differently than they did when they just read them. Sure. And... All of this started because the guy that headed up the study said that there's a current politician that he 
has a very low opinion of, and he read what he had to say in the Sunday paper. Then the very next day, he was in his car listening to the radio, and he heard that same politician give the very same speech, and he went, okay, now wait a minute. It felt different? Like, when I heard him say that, I felt completely different about it than I did when I read it in the paper. And that's where this study came from. And what they have discovered is that when you read something versus when you interact with a real human being or even just see them giving the speech or whatever, that when you see them, you evaluate them completely differently than if you just read the words that they would say. I think that makes sense. It's not just if you're looking at someone fighting or arguing online, but it includes email and text messages. You don't get a tone with it. Mm -hmm. You can't actually tell what a person is saying because you can say something one way and it means something different if you can actually hear what their inflection is and and what they're saying. Um, So I'm not surprised. And it it just gets too much when you start getting into that online. If you ever take time and read a book on relationships or take a class on communications or anything, one of the very first things that they will tell you is that whatever you say will be received in the worst way possible. (laughs) It will. So like if you say something and it's like, oh, they won't think that. No, they will. It, you think of the worst way they could take it, and that's the way they will it's take like it. It's like you go into it offended when you yes. haven't even started. And so a lot of times, again, if you'll read about relationships, they will say, okay, your natural tendency is to take this the worst way possible. You've got to train yourself to not take it the worst way possible. But online, you're doing that right now. Everything's the worst way possible. You just read something somebody said, and you it absolutely, you immediately took it to the absolute worst place possible. And so the recommendation of UC Berkeley and the University of Chicago is that if you have someone that you care about, you should not be arguing with them on the Internet. They say at the very least, you should sit down across from them Argue to face discuss. To face. Well, but they say that uh, discussing it face to face. You might so, not argue as much. Well, and it's interesting too. their point is that, hey, this is a, the way discourse in America used to happen. We used to see each other face to face and we would discuss something and I not this particular piece of research, but reading something else over the weekend. One of the things they were talking about is that we've lost the art of disagreeing uh, congenially so that, you know, you would be able to disagree with someone and not walk away like, well, I hate them and they hate me. And like, no, you can just disagree and that's okay. It's fascinating what we're doing in public spaces. But there you go. Science, Nikki. If you don't want to hate people, don't argue with them on the Internet. That's the best recommendation. Nikki and Obadiah. Obadiah and Nikki. Love, hate, hate, love. All right, everyone in. Let's go. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Now, did you make it to Black Panther over the weekend? I did not. Eric went on Saturday, and mm-hmm. he said it was great, but I did not see it. I, I also made it. I went uh, Friday afternoon. Black Panther brought in domestically on the three-day weekend $192 million. So U.S. So, here, and mm-hmm. then worldwide it made... $361 million. The expectation is that if you count today President's Day, because it's technically a four-day weekend, but here in the U.S. it will pull in $218 million. Which is way more than they thought. Uh, let's talk about the records that it broke over the weekend. First off, it broke the record for the largest opening for an African-American director. That previously was held by F. Gary Gray for The Fate of the Furious. Last April, that opened with $98 million. Uh, It also broke the record for the largest opening of any movie in February, which belonged to Deadpool. Deadpool Deadpool made $132 million. So what else did it break? It's the second largest opening for a Marvel movie behind 2012's The Avengers. So that means that it made more money than any other Marvel movie in its opening weekend. Kind of a big deal. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything else? Uh, no, I think that's all the records. Maybe there's another one floating out there I missed. But let's just say it, it did, made bank. It did good. It did. <laughs> I went to the theater on Friday. It was sold out in what? Like I, It was showing on, I think, five screens. Four of them were almost sold out. I managed to get a seat in a theater that when I went in, they have like that seating grid so mm-hmm. you can see which seats are taken. I counted. There were eight open seats 
in that theater. And the rest were probably in the front row. Yes. Yeah. That's Actually, the, that's true. There may have been a whole row in the that front. That was but, basically the same for Eric. It was like, well, I guess this is the one seat I'll sit in. Yeah, like everybody went to see Black Panther this weekend. That was and exciting. Yeah. I mean, it had good reviews and no offense to all the other movies out in February, yeah. but January and this month have been pretty... I don't know, pretty slow when it comes to what comes out. I can tell you right now, the last two weeks of the box office, abysmal. Like, there's just nothing there. So, or nothing all- exciting. And I feel like this okay, kind of... Okay, there has checked, been something there. This check the box for something exciting and new. You're right, Nikki. Fifty Shades Free is on its second week, so... <laughs> that didn't seem to be that way. Didn't really count for me. Uh, but yeah, it had a huge week. And you know what? It was... I thought it was good. Like, I thought it was a good movie. I, I do think that there is a moment where it gets a little rushed, and I made the mistake of saying that uh, on the internet. Oh, how could you? Which was a appa- mistake. apparently not something you, you're supposed to do, and uh, that it's like, hey guys, I didn't say it was bad. You asked me if I liked it. I told you that there was a part, that was the only thing, that was literally the only thing I could come up with that I thought needed a little work, and it was like, there's nothing about this movie that needs work. You're how dare the you? Wrong one. Don't you remember our pre- previous conversation about I online know. and I arguing? Know. I know, I shouldn't have said anything at all about it. I think my favorite part of the movie was Black Panther's sister. Fantastic. She was like a cross between Q and... I don't know somebody, but like she had all the gadgets and all the cool stuff. Like I, I liked you her. like that character. I did. I really did like her. So it was a good. It was good. And apparently, I'm not the only one that thought so because whoa. Did anything? Do they have the rest of like the top five? I always like when something the number one movie has such a big opening, and then it's yeah. like, well, let's go from a hundred and something million to like here's number two at twelve million. Here's number two at seventeen million. They're pretty close. Uh, Peter Rabbit. Uh, Fifty Shades at number three, sixteen million. Jumanji at four with eight million. That still made a lot of money. That's still there. Hey, dude, they're pulling in. They're almost uh, well. Right now, they're at three hundred and seventy-seven million domestically. So, like, Jumanji's done really well. Uh, the fifteen seventeen to Paris made seven million. And then I, the other movie I saw this weekend was Samson. It made almost two million. I haven't even seen a trailer for that yet. I've seen a couple of trailers for it. Um, it is okay. I will say that that is a a tale. That is a historical tale that I do feel like is more difficult to translate to the screen. Samson's arc is not a happy arc. It's a tragedy. And so and you can only put so much tragedy in a movie. So it um, like it. I've it had an uphill battle, like putting on Black Panther weekend may not have been like, man, like last weekend when there was nothing. That, that might have been a little bit better. It, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but. Again, but that tale Valentine's isn't Day. really for that type of time. I get it. Leftovers from the most disgusting meal you've ever had. <laughs> it's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Uh, I need to bring this back. I just found this cover photo I used to have. Do you believe the man you love is overfeeding you and making you fat in order to control you? And then there's a number where you can call the Maury Povich show. Is that is that used to be your cover photo on Facebook? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, bring that back then. It's nice. Do you believe the man you love is overfeeding you and making you fat in order to control you? What? What? That uh, means they're looking for that guest to be on their show. They're looking is that for even somebody. still a show? Or? I have no idea. I just know I found that on the internet and it makes me laugh. So there you have it. Also, happy birthday, Nikki. Thank you. We're going to have to do these peep things soon because once I opened it, I want to eat the Oreos now. <laughs> We've got Oreos that have peep flavored um, filling in them. So we'll do a riot food fight in just a little bit. So. Yawn over there. You didn't have to call it out. I got someone, through it. Someone was. I got through it. All right. <laughs> Nikki, how do you feel about a new job? A new job? Yeah. What do you say to like ditching this? Well, I mean, that's uh, an option I, I wasn't uh, looking at doing. I quite enjoy being here. Okay. Well. Um, but sometimes you feel like, oh, maybe hey, you want to do something out. different. You can see the world. You can go around. Disney is looking for a youth activities counselor for its cruise ships. So the idea is that uh, I, you go and you'll basically, I guess, set up activities. You have to have uh, two years experience working in a fast paced recreational environment. That's here. If I ever heard of a description of the riot, Boom! fast paced. The only problem you're going to have is you're supposed to be fluent in Spanish. That's preferred, but you don't have to. Be. I mean, after taking three years in high school and remembering nothing, I think I have a pretty good grasp of it. Yeah. The only the other thing I would throw in is that like we've had jobs here at Radio U where we're like, hey, you have to have this much experience. Oh, yes. Nobody. 
everybody's like, they oh, lie so much. Let me lie to you about my experience. So, Nikki, we could totally lie to them about your experience. I, and, and once I get in, then I can learn as I go. Yeah, but like I, I'm willing to learn and I want to whatever. I, I just need them to take a look at me. And sometimes you got to fib to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's see that. Ooh, you know what? You're going to have to get used to being tested for alcohol because you're not allowed to drink while you're on this cruise. That's no problem. And so they will test, Nikki. Now, question for this, for this uh, ultimate Disney um, youth activity director. Is that what you called it? Uh-huh. You know how some people, oh, you're yawning oh, again. Sorry. I know. It's just coming out. I'm... You know how some people consider youth to be like, oh, yeah, for those of us in our 20s. And it's like an older person who thinks that's youth. Or are you talking like four-year-olds? I think it's kids. Kids, kids? Yeah. Like well, then that's young. why they the drinking thing, because I mean, it's probably a lot to handle. They don't need you They want to make sure you're not back. coping mm-hmm. with that for the job. Uh, another thing to just a little heads up, like it's a 70 to 84 hour a week job. What? Excuse me? 70 to 84 hours a week. Seven days a week. No thanks. That's part of what makes those hours so How much are you high, making? You know? What are they offering money-wise? Uh, I don't even think they list that, Nikki. You know, just getting to work for Disney is such an honor. It's probably a volunteer position. So, nope, it does not say. I don't see a listing here for an expected salary. I feel like I don't want to have that Ooh, job. No way. Here's one. Uh, according to Glassdoor, they're a company that basically lists what people say they make at different companies. You make about $1,500 a month. What? That is not enough. That is not enough that is, for that the, work. They say they say that the reason that works out is because there's food and board, so you're oh, eating. But still, I don't know if that's enough. So, like, I got to tell you, taking my existing me, budget. Yeah, if you told me like, oh, per paycheck, and you got a couple a month, but not that. So at fifteen hundred, your take home would be what is that about? 18,000 a year. I mean, that's of course before taxes, but you would have no ex- very little expenses. expenses. So I mean, you except would- mentally. I mean, that's a I think that one we know people. I'm sorry, did you say this on cruise ship or yeah. mm-hmm. we know people who've done cruise ship stuff before. It's yeah. not the board is not great. The food is great, but yeah. like the, the experience room you stay in is terrible. No, and I, I think that would take a big toll on you. Some people like it. I like. I know I wouldn't because I hated going to camp. So That's this like would a be small, living at camp. Of camp that would never go away. And you're not even being catered to. They're catering to you. I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> no thanks. I couldn't do it. I like. There's part of me that's like, would it be fun? It's like, yeah, one week I'm out. Plus, I've never even been on a cruise before. I don't even know if I get like seasick. Oh yeah. Throwing Find up the whole week. Like, yeah, we can fly you home in six months. <laughs> So, best of luck. You'll get used to it after the It'll first week. Pretty soon, you won't even want to be on land anymore. Yeah, then you got land sickness. <laughs> oh, gosh, sickness for days. The riots. Apparently, some of the less athletic types go nuts for this stuff. Radio U. The Museum of Candy. What more could you give Nikki for her birthday than a trip to the Museum of Candy? <laughs> but that is all like, look, but don't touch. Like, you can't have any of it compared to if you went to a candy shop. Probably. Um, it's going to be opened by the Sugar Factory, which they say is a popular international dessert chain, well known for being frequented by celebrities. Uh, I won't give you a list of all them celebrities, but think Museum of Candy, which will feature the world's largest gummy bear, a gumdrop room. And a make-your-own candy station. It will be in the former Limelight Club, which is a 30,000-square-foot space that was converted from a church. Would you like to come and worship at House of Candy? (laughs) Pray before the world's largest gummy bear! Bow down! Now, I'm sorry, where is that at? Bring your gifts to the gummy altar! At the altar of the gummy. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. Okay, all right. It's getting weird. Um... Yeah. So Where that's is what, it at? Uh, it's New, me- York, New York City. In New York, okay. Mm-hmm. It'll have an exhibit devoted to America's favorite confectionery. Um, there will be a cafe, a restaurant, a dessert-only food, food hall, a marketplace, candy and dessert-making stations. Uh, okay, it sounded just like a restaurant. Yeah, I was going to say, that's really what this is. Mm, and then know. for a second, it sounded like you are going to say a fool hall. Because <laughs> if, you, if you're going, you're a fool. Food hall. Sorry. My bad. Uh, the Museum of Candy... Apparently, somewhere in New York, they also opened up the Museum of Ice Cream. Yes, that's been 
Oh, and look at this. Museum of Something. Candy will be opening this year in New York, and then it's going to get a second location in Los Angeles. Well, this is just a chain restaurant. It's almost like a, no, it's almost like an art installation. Like, it's basically just your chance to go Instagram a couple of pics, and that's it. <laughs> okay, they say, um, oh, the Museum of Ice Cream was a traveling thing that's popped up in a bunch of different places. So yeah. That was the place where you can go, like, swim in the sprinkles, but they were sprinkles that... Really? Were not like real ones. They were like antibacterial free type of thing. Fake sprinkles. Yeah, but they felt kind of real, and you could go and just swim in them. <laughs> Yay! You know, if that's been your thing, yeah, your whole life you've been like, I just want to immerse myself in sprinkles. But it always felt weird, and you never wanted to tell anyone. <laughs> it's your own private problem. I'm telling you, man. Not that it's a problem. For everything <laughs> you want. There's somebody out there that's making it happen. Now there's a museum a for that. Scary. So the Museum of Candy. The Museum of Candy, Nikki. You your chance to spend all that time with candy. Right now, if you could have any piece of candy, what would you have? Um well, candy bar or just like candy candy. I, you know what? Anything you want. I want a Snickers bar. Just a Snickers bar? Yeah, and I feel like something with toffee in it. Even though with it, a toffee Snickers? Something. Okay. Like a toffee bar, a like Heath a, bar. All right. Any candy I want right now. My first thought was a Cadbury cream egg. My second thought was, you know, I can't remember the company is, but they make these little hearts at Valentine's Day, but they're full of peanut butter. They're chocolate hearts full of peanut butter, but it's not Reese's. It's like a Dove or something, but it's got a, a very different flavor than a Reese's. I'll take one of those. Okay. Actually, I'll take a whole bag of those. So basically, since anything. We're wishing. Anything. Yeah, don't limit yourself. Why, like, I want a museum I, full of it. I'll take a bucket. <laughs> and then all the wishes I could have. Um, I feel like you are just fine if it's chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, that's fine too. I actually, okay, last weekend, I would have always have wondered. Like they used to run these commercials from Reese's where they just had a piece of chocolate and they would smear peanut butter on it. And I was like, well, what's that like? I've never done that. So I did. That's great. You just buy a Hershey's bar and just, and just, bl- just put chocolate on it. On. Yeah. So that's, you know, don't that's do healthy. that. Don't actually do that. <laughs> You're hearing it for the first time and it sounds terrible. It's the worst of the riot. On Radio U. Hey, uh, Nikki, I'm also focused on what I feel like you should consider. A 204 square foot house. That's a tiny house. On wheels. Oh, it's a movable tiny house. That you, yeah, think about that. You could take I can go business. anywhere I want. Anywhere you want. That's so small, though. The world is your house, Nikki. Go ahead and take a look at it. Because it's the size of an oyster. <laughs> That's exactly right. When you live in an oyster, then the world is sure, an oyster. Because it's movable, it's fine. They're movable wood oyster. <laughs> and it's funny, they have pictures of the couple that have finished the thing and they're living in there and they're like, we have a baby and it takes a bath in this bucket. And you're like, yeah, just to be clear, I don't want to be weird about it, but you know that baby's going to outgrow that bucket. Just like and you're going to outgrow you for this the bucket house. for the rest of your life. Actually, that's been the trend. I read several articles and I've noticed... At least on, because I like to watch home shows. And the yes, tiny, you do. The tiny home shows aren't really popular anymore. And I've been reading articles and watching a lot of YouTube videos of people who have li- are leaving their tiny homes to go on to a normal size. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it seems like that's really turned compared to last year, tiny homes was still very popular. I always enjoyed talking to Nikki about tiny homes oh, because she would it. get so angry. I hate it. She get, like, she's She's keeping her calm right no, now. No, it, because it reminds me of every time this, it's like a family of eight and these poor children, they're like, well, we could pick this caboose or this shipping container. Where do you want to live? And only children are able to sleep right next to each other. As long as they stare straight up at the ceiling, they can sleep. <laughs> and they are they're dangerously able to fall right on out of the loft. It's no big deal. But I've seen a couple of like really cool shipping containers that someone's really put in some, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking like, hey, we don't have any windows. I mean, I know I sound spoiled, but like 204 square feet is not even enough for me. Like if it was just, just me, me, I'd be like, look, this is not enough. I need some room in here, guys. I mean, it's no different than a dorm, but when you're in a dorm, you want out of a dorm. Well, you know what? Okay. Looking at this very carefully. There's is nice. I suppose that if it was just me, it would be fine. Wouldn't you be lonely, though? Well... You no. and your just tiny, tiny home. No, it's fine. You can have friends over. One friend. I was going to say, no, you can't. You know, but you throw parties outside, Nikki. Well, if you were interested in a tiny home, I feel like that, that tide has turned. Where is the shower that is they show in this? Like, where? Is, I, is that the thing that, is, is that, that the pole that's on the outside? <laughs> or is that inside? It's just where the toilet is. A lot of times it's those, those oh, wet so you ones. you shower in the toilet? Pretty much.
That's great. That sounds just like you. I Some, love to do that's that. That's always something you love. Yeah, and then look, there's a photo of it. We'll just hook your tiny house up to your uh If I wanted to travel truck. and not stay in one place, maybe this might be an option. This reminds me of actually. Oh, no, there is a full shower. There's a stand-up one. There's a Top Gear episode in which, do you remember that episode where they all made their own campers? Yes. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yes. That's what it looks like. Except I'm sure theirs is built better than that. Sure. It they, just depends on what you want in life. Well, well Oh, that diplomatic you took it to, way of took saying it, to that it. Level. I did. You took I don't want to crush like someone's tiny house dreams. Okay, well, they said that they were living in an apartment, paying a ton of rent, and they just decided, whatever, let's just build a house on wheels, and we'll take our money and do that. So, you know what? Now they're living rent-free in their $30,000 portable where, thing. Sure, and they just pay like rent usually to wherever you park your thing. I guess. Maybe they just park it on the beach. Who can own the beach? Actually, Who can own the ocean? It's quite popular to have someone own it. Well, own so. speech. Yeah, you can't own it. Okay, maybe it's in the sky. No, I'm sure that's even to somebody. Okay, you don't All have right. any air real <laughs> real estate stuff now. What? You don't have some of that? Man, I should really invest. Oh, I right? invested in that a long time ago. Dang it! I'm always <laughs> behind. Well, you just that and your Bitcoin. You're not going to get anything. Oh, I wonder how my Bitcoin's doing. We should see. Send your complaints regarding that worst of the riot moment to fire Obadiah at RadioU.com. Oh, I want to say a big thanks to Ian that just stopped by. He is watching the Riots Food Fight on Facebook. You can go to Radio U or Radio U Riot if you make sure to uh, subscribe and follow both pages. You'll be set then. Uh huh. Uh, Jason says happy birthday, Nikki. Have Thank a blessed you. one, and then he has a little cake. So today for our birthday food fight edition, mm-hmm. we are trying the Peeps Oreos. So it is an Oreo that mm-hmm. has officially teamed up with Peeps. Yeah, and as I was saying off air, uh, if you've been watching us on Facebook, if you look here, I just feel like there was a fight over whose logo went where for what. Normally, you don't get any logos if it's in like it's actually with a another corporation. Mm-hmm. But for this, the the Oreo cookie has a Peep logo on it. it as a matter of fact, it does. It's, it's fact, got a cute little Peep. It, look at that. Can you see him? Which we don't really like Peeps very well. I don't like Peeps at all. I really. didn't want to say such a strong statement it? with it. Except but what? You're right. What is it that Chris did with him? Like he would put him he in the oven. He made okay a Peep s'more. It's yeah, pretty good. That's what he did. That's pretty good. So, so this it just is a limited smells edition, like marshmallows. Uh, Peeps Oreo with marshmallow Peeps flavor cream in it. And it's a chocolate cookie for the Oreo. Oh, do you notice, though? One side Oreo, the One side. other oh. side Peeps. Oh, you already started. <laughs> because they had a fight. That's what happens if you start <laughs> without but the other person in the room. No, it's anything I eat. So chocolate cookie and Peeps filling. Do you the chocolate taste the cookie peep? is just so strong, but yeah, it kills the flavor. Let's open it up and get just the filling. Actually, the filling's kind of it. Kind of works with it. It's kind of mm-hmm. good. It's not really off from a normal fill. <laughs> it's strong. What do you think? It. What? I think I could <laughs> eat it and not know that it, it there was, was anything different about it. Really does Wait. just seem like marshmallow. On the right side of my tongue, just now. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I got a slight peepish back, little flavor in the back. Yeah, and there's like you know how you eat peeps and they have like that <laughs> sugar. I'm sorry, that sugary outside. Yeah, there were a couple of places in the bite where it was like there was some kind of crunch inside the cream. But honestly, if you just went at it and you had this Oreo, I really don't know if you would guess right away that it is a peeps inside. Oh, I don't even know if you'd be able to get that it's peeps at all. Sure. Like, if we didn't tell you, I don't think you could nail the flavor down. It's good, though. I like it. Yeah. Well, it tastes a lot like a regular Oreo, which, which is uh, I tried like and it's, true. It's got some staying power. Then you could eat more normal Oreos, Oreos I feel, than with the flavored combinations mm-hmm. that they normally come up with. But, yeah, that works. All right. It's pretty tame, but it's good. It's good. And it's it is pretty. Good. Nice little purple filling on that. That's mm-hmm. my color right there. That it looks good. nice. Want to know what the riot is doing right now? Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at riot.radiou.com. It's the worst of the riot.
on Radio U. Again, you can swing by and uh, wish Nikki a happy birthday. We are live on Facebook right now. Facebook.com slash Radio U. And also Radio U Riot. Make sure to follow both pages. If uh, you need a second, go over there quickly. Thank you, Dan, for the happy birthday. Maggie, thank you for the happy birthday as well. It's present time. This is Nikki's uh, present in this bag. Thank you. I'll yeah. keep the bag. Um, everyone does. How do you think I got that one? I know this wasn't something that you bought just for this. I did not purchase that bag for you in particular. Okay. Thank you. Nikki knew what she was getting. Thank uh, you. Nikki Mario has Kart. Mario Kart 8 for the hey. Switch. Now, here's something that I want you to know. Yeah. That before you and I had a conversation off air the other day, you kind of ruined your own present because Why? that's what I was going to buy you. Oh, it was? The reason I was going to buy you Mario Kart 8 is as follows. After I gave you Space Camp for Christmas, which was received... And Nikki tried really hard to make it okay, but she absolutely positively did not want it. I didn't need it. Need is a better word. We had talked months before. It's like, oh, yeah, this old movie. And, and she wanted to see it. And then he didn't know I went on YouTube. And watched, watched it. Watched what I needed to watch, apparently. I didn't even think about you didn't it. Need it anymore. And then you remembered. But yeah. I, was, I appreciated you remembered. And what you said as soon as you opened it was like, oh, I thought you would get me Mario Kart 8, which, by the way, hadn't even remotely occurred to me. No. I thought I had told you about that. No, I wanted no, no. to play because Obi and I played for an Obadiah Plays. We did. Last year. So if you go to our Radio U Riot YouTube channel, um, you can find it in the Obadiah Plays section. Mm-hmm. And I had so much fun playing it with you. I thought, oh, I'll really like it since I have a Switch now. So yeah. that's what I wanted. Yay! Well, I just thought, like, if I... I, at Christmas, my thought process was if I buy Nikki Mario Kart 8, she's just going to not be to able one, to play it because Eric's going to hog it. No. So he'll, he'll that like was the big concern. Me. Thank you. All right. Yay. So there you go. Mario Kart 8. Can we all applaud Obi That's for better. a fantastic well, birthday present? And Nikki said to me off air, I had already decided I was going to buy it for her. And then off air at one point, I was like, all right, look. I've been thinking about buying you a present, but do you just want a gift card? And she goes, well, if you bought me Mario Kart 8, that would be okay. No, I told you I, I didn't mind the, the wheel because I didn't want oh, you to spend right, this right. much money on me. And I thought, well, the wheel will Big be enough. Big switch money. The wheel will be enough. <laughs> and then someone else would maybe give me the game. So <laughs> thank you. Well, I, then I had to go check with Eric like, hey, did you buy Mario Kart 8 for Nikki? And he said, no. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Now I still need the wheel. It's done. So if anybody just still needs the wheel. to get wheel, Nikki a Mario Kart 8 wheel. Then I'm complete. I've got you, the perfect birthday. If you want to know the truth, you don't need the wheel. It's, oh, you don't? It's well, way I want more it fun for show. The, okay. Yeah. Just, just, just so you the, have a prop. Yeah, that's what I think I would enjoy. But thank In you again you for all the happy birthdays. Happy and, birthday, Nikki. And a wonderful Woo! present. That was super nice of you. Very and generous. Balloons from we think Nikki's mom, but we don't know. No, I think she did. She she Did she leave a note? Balloons. No, but uh, she just told me there was something here. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, happy birthday, Nikki. Birthday launch, and then uh, you're on your own. Then, I'm, then that's it. We no move more on. goods. <laughs> then we're back to normal no tomorrow. No more Starbucks. No more <laughs> cookies. No more presents. I, I get it. So, I hope you're not looking forward to tomorrow, because it's really going to suck. We searched for something positive to say about the riot and finally came up with one word. Consistent. Consistently terrible, but still consistent. Radio U. Uh, Nikki, I was looking at alternate birthday presents for you this weekend, and one of the ones that I came across is that uh, the people at Mattel just announced uh, uh, Tomb Raider Barbie. Ooh, yeah. And the thing is... (laughs) I would love that, right? It went on sale today. Yeah. So... You would have had to have gone and gotten it and then brought it in. I know, but think about it, Nikki. It's like it was meant to be. Your birthday is the day they start selling Tomb Raider Barbie. <laughs> it's perfect. It's, it is perfect. And well, look, Tomb there's Raider, still a chance. If, you, if we want to take back Mario Kart, I guess I could go get that. This Tomb Raider Barbie comes with her ice pick or axe or whatever that pick thing is that she uses, both to climb and to waste a fool. If you've seen the trailers or played the game. You would know that that's what you can also do. She does some very terrible things with that hex pick thing that she has. I guess I keep forgetting a new Tomb Raider comes out. Yeah, that movie's out March 1st. I watched, I saw on Netflix, I think it got added or like promoted again. The old Tomb Raider movies? Yeah, and it was the first one. And so I watched a bit of it and I was like, wow, doesn't hold up as well. I'll bet it doesn't hold up well at all. It wasn't very good when they made it. 
like effects wise it doesn't hold up i don't even feel like the acting holds up like it just isn't isn't the best i remember thinking there was the original tomb raider and then was it cradle of life which was the second one yeah i as i recall i remember thinking the second one was i'm not going to use words like good nobody said no good. one no one's going that strong good. okay but I'm maybe gonna, not as bad as the first one i'm going to use a comparative word and that is better sure i just remember it being better than the, the first, first one. one it's like obi watched well it was you right you watched the first mission impossible the other I day did. because you watched the new trailer for the upcoming mission impossible like a bajillion times yeah, so. I, yes i did you go back watch the first one you're like what is this it's <laughs> this is not what off. i like well you know they used to market and push tomb raider very differently than they do now mm-hmm. like back in the day i was not a tomb raider fan it wasn't until they've done like two tomb raider reboots after these movies they did a tomb raider like video game reboot where I got very interested in it. And then even this kind of second reboot they did back in, like, was it 13 or 14? Like, way better. Like, that. The both of those, like, Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider were games that I just, I loved them. Like, absolutely loved them. And this movie is based on those games. So, like, I'm hoping that since the games are better... This will be better, but I I don't think the trailer looks. Eh, we'll see how it goes. I, there's something about the trailer that when I look at it, I go. I'm sure they messed it up somehow. I don't know, guys. And we're low expectations. I don't know, guys. <laughs> My hope is that they're able to. It'd be great if they would just make a movie and kind of forget about the game. But there were enough scenes from the game in from, the yes, trailer yeah, that yeah. made me go, uh oh. But if they didn't remember the newer style of the game, I feel like they would ruin Lara Croft even more because they had kind of toned her down a bit. A lot. Uh, for the most recent reboots of the game. And I feel like that style was more appreciated from a lot of people. But Hollywood doesn't normally do that when it comes to movies. So yeah. we'll see what they come up with. Hey, I hope it's good, right? And with you know, with my movie pass, I see everything. So <laughs> you don't even it care. Won't You're like, I'll see it. They're like this movie's terrible. I'm in. It's the worst of the riot because calling it the best of the riot would be a lie. Radio, you. Okay, Nikki. <laughs> okay, I went to the movies twice this weekend. I saw Samson and Black Panther. Now, in front of Samson, I saw like the Mission Impossible trailer. Something about a volleyball girls team, something win for somebody. I don't know, whatever. And then. What else did you see? In front of. Uh, oh, first off, in front of Black Panther, I I timed this out. There were 23 minutes, minutes of, trailers. of trailers. I know, isn't it? A, it's ridiculous. 23 minutes. The movie was supposed to start at like whatever. I tie, like I, and I looked at it, I was like, we've been watching trailers forever. That's not just Black Panther, though, because like that was such a high profile movie. The last movie I saw had 20 something minutes of trailers, too. It's like you could literally bank on 30 minutes after the start time and you'd probably just get in there at the right time. I actually, funny you say that, I do that all the time. It's like, why bother showing up at the start of when they say the movie will start? Because it does not. I And again, maybe it's a movie pass thing, I don't know, but I just like show up and I'm like, I'm 20 minutes late. No, nope, probably, probably right on time. <laughs> probably right on time. Just go ahead and give me that ticket, please. So what's the movie? <laughs> There's a trailer for a movie that is coming out. I've never heard of it. Now, we've been watching what's coming up. I've never heard of it. It comes out March 9th. It's called Hurricane Heist. Is this a real movie? It's real. It's about, uh, it's directed by Simon West, who they kept, like, their big thing that they were pushing is, like, the director of The Fast and the Furious. Now, keep in mind, this is, and I was like, wait, Justin Lin did that? No, 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 no. Simon West, or excuse me, Rob Cohen did, and Rob Cohen directed the very first uh, Fast, Fast and the Furious, Furious movie, movie. So which is the, the it's not a lie. It's the least like the rest of the Fast and Furious movies. So this movie, even the logo, like the trailer, the logo, everything, they're trying to scream Fast and Furious at you. But it's about a bank heist on the Federal Reserve that takes place with a hurricane that's coming. Thieves attempt a massive heist against the U.S. Treasury as a Category Five hurricane approach because they figure you're they're going to be you know preoccupied. They're going to be fighting the hurricane like, and each other. And this looks like for TV or Netflix. Okay, but it does not look like theaters. This is where it gets even better. Is that when you get halfway through the trailer, yeah. they start playing that song, Rock You Like a Hurricane. No, they don't. They That's do. so tacky. They do. Come and on. I was like, 
<laughs> that is so tacky. I burst out laughing, and my first thought was like, oh, I'm seeing this. Because you have movie pass. I That's know. not fair. You shouldn't see this stuff. If you see this stuff, that then is telling them, we need more. We've got to make more. We need Hurricane we made money. Heist, too. Yeah, and that's not right. This is Tornado turnover. This is exactly like, what was the tornado, uh, the sci-fi one? The Sharknado? Really, yeah, it's, it reminds me just like that. It well, minus the sharks. a little more money. I don't know. Like just a little bit more. Have you seen some of the effects? Okay, it's fair. What's the semi thing? That's where I'm at. Big font. They're using big font on this, guys. But it's got, look at the, well, no, they're, look at the old, I don't feel like it comes through on the poster, but when you watch the trailer, yeah, the trailer is literally, like, all of the logos and stuff, it's absolutely Fast and Furious. Like, they are trying so hard to be like, you like Fast and Furious, you like Hurricane Heist, you mil- like it. They're going for $600 million. All yeah. right, March 9th. And they said something like $600 million in 600 mile per hour winds. And I'm like, hold the phone. A Category 5 hurricane does not have 600 mile per hour winds. Yeah, so. Like, I, I think someone's wrong on I that. I feel like, I mean, if we're going to lie, let's at least lie a little closer to the truth. You guys are like all the way in. Yeah. Okay. I've, I have not seen this trailer. So. Well, but you need I've to wa- watch it. I I'm not telling you we should talking. watch the movie. I watched but it without. But you need to watch the trailer with the sound. No, I was going to say I watched it without the sound. I feel like that's enough. You need to hear the sound, Nikki. The hurricane heist. Man, your movie pass thing. What? I still think it's bad. This movie looks bad, then therefore they should be told it's bad by you not watching it. Oh, no. But because you have your movie pass and you want to see another movie, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll see it. And that does not just get up at least leave during it. No, no. No, oh, Nikki, that violates the terms of service for oh, you movie have pass. to sit in there? I have to stay. Leave your phone in there. Go do something else or go watch another movie. I don't understand why you're all of a sudden so negative about Hurricane Heist. It looks terrible. Yeah. The riot's motto, Carpe Cupcake. Those are words to live by. Radio U. If you would start following me on Instagram, you will know that this weekend I discovered the next level. Now... <laughs> To be clear, I discovered the next level, but I did not ascend. I thought we'd already seen that one when we went there a while ago. I don't remember remember seeing it. Now, many of you, again, if you've spent time following me on social media at all, you may be familiar with the great love I had for the Fizzinator. The Fizzinator was something that I purchased at a Sheets gas station on a trip to Purple Door, in which I bought myself a large... What do they call that? Du- like double wall insulated. insulated 52 ounce mug. Refills were only 59 cents. And that thing was so much soda. Like to where you wonder, how does someone get sick from having too much soda? And I'm like, that's why. Well, Nikki, <laughs> I went to a Big B coffee yesterday. Now, Big B is a chain in Michigan, northeastern Ohio, maybe like northwestern Indiana. I'm not really sure. But uh, I went to a Big B coffee and walked in and there it was they have a fizzinator they do or is it bigger but their fizzinator is 100 no. how are you ounces. holding that how are 100? you holding that no, that's why you're in the gym you gotta get strong <laughs> to hold that liquid it's like when you work out just to eat certain things it's like you gotta work out just to be able to drink some things come on and, it, and that's normally a coffee shop though like that's not for coffee is it well That'd you kill you you can get it filled with coffee if you want to. That's a bit much. That's a big deal. That's you know, a lot. What is that? About 13 cups of coffee? Now, if you're at a 13 cup a day, you've got to cut back. Well, you, I don't know, Nick. You like, remember, okay, this is like a way throwback, but do you remember when Marvin came in? He was the ENT. No. E, emergency ma- EMT. Yeah. ENT's ear, nose, and throat. You can see where we get the, right? Oh, he's been going. It's yeah. fine. Um, so... He came in and he told us that he used to drink two or three pots of coffee a day. A pot of coffee is like it's more than 16 cups or maybe it's about 16 cups. I don't know. Does it make 12 or 16 cups in there? Let's in just say pot? 12. To Let's be, say 12. Okay. Just to be on, on the low end. Well, even that's only 36. Well, wait, I'm thinking ounces, not yeah. cups. That's where I'm getting. No, no, no. It's I ounces, mean, not cups. It's a I'm lot, sorry. guys. But still, that would be three pots at 12 ounces. That's only 36 ounces. So, and what is that? Like, not quite five cups. I feel like they went big, maybe too big. Yeah. But, you know, you can fill it up with water. (laughs) 
Okay. Or that dual insulation helps with that. It keeps it cool. The thing I thought when I saw it is like I just wanted to take it to a gas station because a lot of them will have a thing where they're like, you know, pop is this much, but re- refills are sixty nine cents. Bring and they in your usually, own cup. yeah, you can usually bring your own cup because I would go in places with the fizzinator, fill up, and let the good times roll, man. So this is uh, for Bigsby. Which is a big B, no big ass. B. Like big big B sounds better. Big B. You know, somebody just got really offended at that. Teasing, yeah, I'm so teasing. You weren't teasing. You were that was real talk. Oh, well, it's a cuter name. <laughs> I think I think it's a family name. Bigsby. Big B. Oh, no, just it's a family name. Big B. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what you just did? Ruined it. Offended an entire family. Oh come on! I call a blood feud. So it must uh, be settled in blood. <laughs> Or in 100 ounces of blood of coffee or something like that. So, Ew. yeah, it was a hundred ounce uh, big cup, big mug. It was, it was tempting. I wanted to fill it up or I wanted to buy it, fill it with soda, and just be like, I'm back in, guys. And I didn't come back I, in small. I'm back in. I jumped in the pool, which is basically the size of this uh, cup thing that I bought. I drank the pool, oh, but I didn't. I didn't even get coffee. The people I was with got strong. coffee. I got nothing. Nothing. The worst of the riot is over, but the fun can keep going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy, huh? Through riot.radiou.com. Pray before the world's largest gummy bear. <laughs>